This is Dolany TV. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thanksgiving Monday. A lot to be thankful for as an Oilers fan this weekend and past week. Obviously, number one, picking Dylan Holloway, 14th overall. Then you have Carter Savoy down there, Tyler Tulio, the the European kids that, uh, while well, by all accounts, are looking like they could be ready sooner than later. And then you have free agency? No, 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 no. Hold on, Tyson, you're forgetting something. Yes, Apulia RV signing. Then you have free agency, Kyle Turris and Tyler Ennis, and, of course, the minor leaguer guys. And then you have, on the second day of free agency, Tyson Berry and Mike Smith. Again, I, I understand. 50 to 70% of Oilers fans aren't thankful for Mike Smith this Thanksgiving Monday, but it is what it is. All right, so let's get to it, shall we? Is Tyson Berry. That's the name of the game in this video, and, uh, well, Oscar Clefbaum as well. As, you know, the whole thing was the Oilers, if Clefbaum's going to be out all year, need to find a guy to quarterback the power play for them. Well, here we go. Let's just kind of go through what we were looking for to quarterback the power play last season because it's uh, actually kind of funny how Tyson Berry comes to be. Last season, Oscar Clefbaum wasn't exactly at times being the most effective defenseman on the league's top power play. A lot of people cried that Ethan Bear would be better and could be better. And absolutely, there was good reasons to it. Ethan Bear liked to shoot. Ethan Bear liked to do everything that Clefbaum did, except for he was a right-hand shot. Now, look at what we got. We have a right-hand shot with proven capabilities similar to a guy like Oscar Clefbaum, except for... Tyson Berry's kind of had a lot more offensive production over the course of his career. So Clefbaum, this past season in 62 games, had two goals and 16 assists on the power play. Tyson Berry had 11 assists and one goal on the power play in 39 points in 70 games played. So yes, that's a dip of about six points there for Berry. But the year previous in Colorado, 23 power play assists and two Goals while Clefbaum, my friends, has never reached higher than 16 assists on the power play. Now you look back to 16-17, his highest total on the power play in terms of goals is 3. Tyson Berry is a guy that has scored goals on the power plays in bunches over the course of his career. 7 goals in 17-18, 3 in 15-16, and 4 in 13-14. So... That's uh, matching or doing better than Oscar Clefbaum's numbers on the power play uh, over the course of his career. Now, here's the thing that'll be interesting to see is how the Oilers manage ice time. That's, real, that's I guess, really when you talk about changing up the power play, inserting Barry in place of Oscar Clefbaum, who's injured. It, it, it's about managing ice time, I guess, is what I'll say, because... You saw if Oscar Clefbaum was out there way too long, he'd get tired, we'd make a defensive gaffe and shorthand a goal against. Too many times we saw that script this year, and it cost us in probably two or three games. Now with Tyson Berry, a guy who's not known to be the strongest defender, well, you know what, what do you got to do? You got to manage that time a little bit better. You don't let the power play run on for a minute and a half to the full two minutes. You got to chop it in half. So Tyson Berry will have a minute to pretty much hopefully, as long as Dave Tippett's willing to work with suggestions here off of YouTube, have a minute to work with the big guns, right? McDavid, Drysaddle, Nugent Hopkins, whether it be Yamamoto, whether it be Neal, whether it be Chase on whoever finds themselves in front of the net banging in goals, those are your options. Pretty good options. And I, I guess you could add in Tyler Ennis in there as well. So there's a couple of options to do it. Do you do the minute-long power play and then run a second unit? Obviously, that's what I'm in favor of because Tyson Berry would then be able to come out a minute later and play a shift 5-on-5 five five when the other teams got to throw a, a, either a weaker line or a different line, and you can kind of skill match that, that way as well. So that is what that is. But this is where it opens up the whole question of what the Oilers' power play looks like moving forward for this season. Tyson Berry's here for one year minimum, and that allows us to really kind of see the difference 
that having a right hand shot on the top power play unit will do for us. Because last year we had Ethan Bear and Darnell Nurse on the second power play unit. But this year now with Oak Clefbaum in the lineup, we're going to have right hand shot Barry from the point who is no one that he can score power play goals. He's no one to get power play assists. And he's a guy that can drive the offense on a power play. And that's huge. Because guys, honestly, yes. Oscar Clefbaum, pretty good power play for or power play defenseman. Problem is, there's a lot better power play defenseman out there than Oscar Clefbaum. And Tyson Berry, career statistics prove, is one of them. So that's an interesting thing to take a look at there is the fact that we somehow for the $8.7 million in cap space we had bolstered and improved our power play, which was already the league's best power play unit. And this this gets interesting as well, because depending on how you send up Tyson Berry on the power play, you can have a left shot, right shot, one-timer on the points or off the top of the circles or however you set up the power play. Obviously, I think the Oilers are typically known for the 1-3-1, one, one, but right, you, you can set it up any way you'd like and... You know what, you're going to have a really good one-timer and having two right-hand shots, obviously a forward hopefully, or having James Neal in front of the net. You're going to find a way, as long as you get pucks to the net, to score just goals upon goals upon goals. And you know what, yeah, you can't rely on the power play in the playoffs, I know that, but here's the thing, you got to get to the playoffs first. That's what everyone's crying about, these play-ins don't count, we've missed the playoffs for a third straight year. Well, then let's get excited for how we're going to get back to the playoffs if you're in the pooper camp. And it's simply put that having a good power play and good special teams all around will do that for you. That's why the Oilers were second in the Pacific Division this past season. And I'll keep hitting on that because if we're going to say the Oilers didn't make the playoffs but they finished second, you got a conundrum there because we still had a very good season that is any other year good enough to make the playoffs. But now you're you're doing the technicality the other way to say they didn't because they played the play-in. I don't get it. I don't get it, but that that's me, and I'll stop ranting about power play stuff. Or power play stuff. No, that's what I'm going to keep ranting about. Stop ranting about pl playoff stuff. So, that is what that is. Tyson Berry allows that right-hand shot, right? So, when it comes to Tyson Berry and the right-hand shot, if he isn't here after ne next season... Then you have Ethan Bear or Evan Bouchard or whoever you end up using, I, I'd imagine it's one of those two, ready to step in and quarterback the number one power play. Because I'd imagine at this point, if Clefbaum goes out for surgery, it's either he ends up traded or he's probably LTIR for the rest of his contract. I really don't see a situation in which Oscar Clefbaum comes back 100% or even really plays many more games as an Edmonton Oiler, just based on kind of the reports on that shoulder and that situation, it, it doesn't sound like it's exactly a perfect scenario where it's, oh, surgery, bang, bang, fixes it, no problem, Oscar Clefbaum's back in the lineup. So having Tyson Berry allows the guys, especially if Bouchard gets in the lineup this year, guys like Bear and Bouchard to take a page, learn, and then allow themselves that ability to take over that Oilers' top-line power play. Because, yeah, sure, Philip Broberg is probably going to take it over at some point. Or, right, is you've got a lot of options coming down the pipe. But this is the experiment Oilers fans have been asking for. Except for it's not the Bear experiment where you're just hoping he produces. No, you've got a guy in Tyson Berry who's a proven, capable producer on the power play. Better so than Oscar Clefbaum outside of 1920. And, well, you know what? You add that to the league's top power play, sounds like a lot of goals to me. And again, it's a lot of, if the Oilers can actually get set up, get in the zone, and stop wasting their time trying to pull off the perfect zone entry, then we could really see the Oilers get the job done on the power play. And I think that's the interesting part here, is a little bit of Tyson Berry's going to really affect how Dave Tippett has to set up the power play. He's going to have to look and evaluate things a little bit differently than he did with Clefbaum, and that's going to encourage a lot more creativity. And I think no matter where you set up the attackers on the power play this upcoming season, it's going to benefit McDavid, Drysaddle, Nuge, and, of course, whoever's in front of the net, let alone Tyson Berry at the point. 
The interesting part here, the really interesting part, is if the Oilers' power play goes crazy, I'd expect Ryan Nugent Hopkins playing on a line full-time with Drysdale and Yamamoto to be an above point per game player and shut everybody up about having to trade him. Guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. There's a lot to consider on the Edmonton Oilers' revamped power play now simply by changing out Oscar Clefbaum for Tyson Berry, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Cat allergies, I tell you. I'm Tyson. This is Stalin TV. Up on out of here.